Hello everyone, so uh, this is going to be an exciting video, at least uh, for myself, because I'm going to be unboxing and building my second Ryzen 9 PC setup. And uh, the first one I built is a Ryzen 9 3900X, which is a 12 core, um, 24 thread processor. And I have just got my hands on the newest 16 core Ryzen 9 39 3950X, which is a 16 core 32 thread processor. And it's gonna be even faster for video processing and uh, uh, graphic editing in general. So um, as you can see in front of me, I have actually uh, bought a few more new parts so I can build this setup, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using my ex some of my existing setups over here um, and just gonna put those into my new system. So. Uh, what's gonna happen uh, over here in my home is my wife is gonna take my 3900X and I'm gonna be starting using the 3950X, like her old computer, which is actually based on the uh, a, based on a i7-3770 uh, processor. That's a quad core processor from uh, 2012. So that processor is actually kind of uh, outdated and it's really slow whenever she needs to open the Lightroom and do some photo editing and exporting photos. So uh, what's, that's what's gonna happen. So she's gonna take over my 3900 and uh, I'm gonna build a brand new 3950X system. And uh, I'm really glad because the 3950X right now, it's in stock at a lot of places and uh, quite, quite surprisingly, they haven't jacked up the price um, since launch. So I actually just got it at original MSRP of $750 um, on Amazon and uh, they shipped it to me pretty quick uh, along with the motherboard right over here. So uh, the motherboard is also the price has come down quite a lot since uh, my previous build with the 3900X. So back then the 3900X there is really not much choice when it comes down to motherboard. Uh, you can only get a few motherboards um, that's available uh, when I pre-ordered the 3900X. And back then, the 3900X has been delayed for a few months, so it was quite frustrating. Right now, I got my hands on the 3950X, I got my hands on the motherboard, everything else. So, let's get started. Okay, so I just zoomed in my camera a little bit, so what I'm gonna do from this point on is actually just uh, focusing on the product. So. In this section, I'm gonna quickly go over the parts I'm gonna be using to build this 3950X. And quite frankly, some used parts, some new parts. And uh, the case, I have chosen the uh, Define Mesh 5C, which is a high airflow case. So the reason I chose it, the price. It's only $89 shipped on Amazon, $84 shipped on Amazon. Super, super good price. And uh, my old case uh, was a Define R5. I liked that case a lot. But uh, uh, again, that case is gonna be passed down to my wife with the 3900X setup. So I'm like, why not? Let's just build a high airflow case and give it a try. Um, it's gonna be slightly more noisy, but uh, it's gonna have better airflow. And from what I heard, the 3950X actually requires um, a lot better cooling compared to the 3900X. And that is also the reason they didn't give you a uh, building, um, they didn't give you a stock cooler. You have to buy your own, which is what I got here, which is the Noctua D15, which is their best air-cooled cooler out there. So call me old school, I still like air cooling. Uh, you know, liquid cooling is cool and fancy, but it's just too flashy. Almost all the liquid cooler have LEDs. I, I simply don't like LEDs in my case because LEDs produces heat. Why would you want more heat in your case when you can have a really efficient, well-built air cooler for a lot less money, right? So Mashify C is gonna be my case and uh, I'm gonna just put it down for now because I'm gonna uh, start unboxing everything uh, in front of the camera so you guys can uh, follow me and go with my flow when I build this case from ground up, okay? So of course, the game of the tongue, AMD Zen 2 Architectural AM4 Ryzen 9 3950X. This is a 16-core beast. 
So um, I, I have already done a quick review of the 3900X and I'm already super impressed by the performance of the 3900X compared to my old Intel 6 core, um, I think 6850 um, processor. Uh, that 3900X is a beast. I have no doubt 3950 is going to be more of a beast. Okay, so really excited. Um, the SSD, I just bought it as a backup. Uh, probably not going to use it. This is a, actually just a SATA 6 uh, SSD. I bought it on Best Buy and it's a 512 gig. I was about to use it for the operating system, but I have actually decided to just use my old um, Samsung um, 950 Pro and this is a M.2 SSD uh, back then it was really fast and by now it's still pretty fast and it's got my current setup and operating system and everything on here so hopefully when I plug this in there it would actually just recognize the new system and and it wouldn't ask me for a new code on the Windows 10 operating system hopefully but this is what I'm going to be using for storage the M.2 uh, from Samsung 950 Pro. Okay, so that's a storage option. And for the graphic card, again, I'm using my old setup. This is the NVIDIA uh, GeForce G GTX 1080 Ti, which was back then their fastest graphic card. Uh, I spent quite a lot of money on it and it has been proven uh, quite a performer. So I mainly just uh, use it for graphic editing, video editing, and occasional gaming. Uh, the only game I play is Overwatch and this card performs flawlessly in Overwatch. Okay, so that's a graphic card I'm going to be using, the 1080 Ti. And by the way, this is the reference design with um, just a big blower on the side. Actually, it works pretty efficient and it's not as loud as one might think. It actually effectively blows the hot air out of the case instead of blowing it all over compared to some other um, fan setups. Okay, so there's that and um, this is actually a Noctua 120 millimeter fan that I'm going to be using on the back of the Mesh 5C case. So this is the Noctua NFP12 Redux 1700 PWM. So the, the reason I chose this is because I want a, f a exhaust fan to be blowing more air out because I am only going to have one exhaust fan and I'm going to have actually three um, 120 millimeter fan set up in the front. So again, any kind of help to get the air out of the case is going to be uh, really helpful. So at least I know the case is going to have a positive airflow. Okay. Um, the memory was actually from my build for the 3900X. And those are the ballistics uh, DDR4 3200 um, RAMs. And this is uh, one each stick is 16 gigs. So I have a total of 32 gigs running uh, door channel mode. And again, this is from my existing setup. So I didn't buy this new. Um, the motherboard, of course, I bought brand new and that's Asus Tough Gaming um, X570 Plus. So whatever the Tough Gaming means is just uh, supposedly they use the more durable capacitors and resistors uh, what not uh, to increase the motherboard life but in my experience using motherboards if they doesn't fail on the first boot up they shouldn't fail um, and it should last the lifetime of your processor for the most part okay so gonna be interesting to test this out and also this is on the budget and it's only $169 on Amazon uh, again really really affordable so uh, the previous motherboard I bought which is also a Asus the X570 P, um, that model was a entry level model, now sells for $140, uh, but back then I bought it for $170. So as you can see, the price has dropped uh, quite a lot on those motherboards as well. So this one supports the Aura Sync LED flashy stuff. Again, I hate those. So if you guys like those, um, it's got that. And of course, some uh, PCI 4.0 support on the M.2 and of course the PCI Express lanes on the graphic card section, but my old card doesn't support um, 4.0, so we'll have to wait for a new card to come out. Active cooling, uh, it's got a cooling fan as well. All the X570 got, got cooling fans. And uh, so um, let's, let's move on and see what else we got. So 
Over here is the, uh, it's actually a fairly old model, EVG, um, what's this, Supernova 750G2 model. So again, uh, 80 plus gold certified. The G2 has been out for a few years. I bought this brand new from a old stock and uh, only $64 on Amazon. It's freaking good price, so why not? I, I'm trying to have this build more conscious, more budget conscious and not overdo everything and make everything like, you know, not overbuild my 30, 30, 3950X system. Just try to get the bare minimum to get it going. Last but not least, the air cooler, which I just mentioned earlier, it's the Noctua D15, and this is their top of the line air cooler. And again, I have no doubt it's gonna cool the CPU just fine. I'm not gonna be overclocking it, and uh, I'm sure it's gonna do its job fantastic because on my old 3900X setup, I had the, the NHU14S model, which was there one level down. Um, so it's got a slightly smaller, actually, I even have the box on the side. Let me just bring it. So compare the box size of the two different processors. You can immediately tell uh, that this is gonna be a beast in the 3950X. But the U14S actually powers the 3900X without any issue. So if you guys are concerned about cooling, even this will do just fine, okay? But again, for that CPU, I want the best air cooler out there, okay? So um, with all those said, we are gonna start uh, opening up all the packaging and just take a look and see what's inside and then we're gonna start building the system, okay? Okay, so here is the processor in all of its glory. Uh, Ryzen 9 3950X, 16 cores, 32 threads, it's a beast. And uh, for any uh, home-based content creators, photographers, designers out there, this thing is gonna make your workflow so much faster uh, compared to whatever you have right now, okay? Um, so let's, uh, let's open it up and check out the content. So, here we go. So, opening up, 3950X, and, uh, um, <laughs> Uh, slide out right here. <laughs> so that's a processor, uh, $740 piece of magic. Again, it's really magic. It's just such a performer. Uh, quite surprised how fast AMD has catched up and uh, how defenseless Intel is at this point because for now, nobody's buying Intel processors anymore, including me. And uh, what else is in the packaging? Let's see. Honestly, not much, just a big brick. That's, that's all it is. So wish they would have saved some resources and uh, just made the package about this size, okay? I, I don't really mind have a package that size, environmentally conscious, of course, but uh, that's, that's pretty much uh, what's inside the box. So that's it for that. Um, I'm gonna put the box away. Again, a big box with nothing inside besides the processor, okay? So, and again, for Intel processors, their pin is actually on the processor. So be extra careful not to bend any of those pins. Otherwise, you're doomed out of $750, okay? Be really, really careful. So I'm not even gonna open this until I'm ready to put it on the motherboard. Let's move on to the next. Next, what we have is uh, Noctua, an FP12 Redux fan, 700, uh, 1700 RPM spinning speed. And as you can see, just a basic fan. I'm gonna use this on the back of my PC. And obviously with their Redux uh, series of fans, it doesn't really come with extra fancy stuff, just four screws and that's pretty much it. And uh, it's a four pin, so whenever you connect it to the motherboard, 
you can change the fan speed, of course, through the system, through your motherboard, or through your external controllers for the fan. And uh, again, very simple fan. I like the great design. It's not intrusive and uh, kind of low key. Um, and I have been using Noctua fans for a long, long, long time. They're super reliable, very good airflow, uh, great bang for the buck. This, is, this fan is only $14 on Amazon. Um, over here, this big boy is kind of a couple, oh, couple of generations old. EVGA Supernova 750 J2. And this is, of course, the power supply. Um, came out a few years ago. Right now, they are already at, um, I think, G5. So at least uh, three generations behind. However, this is still a really, really good PSU. And especially at the price that I paid, which is only $60, $64. Oh my God, such a good value. Again, back then it was a high-end PSU. So let's see what's inside. So opening up the packaging, very high-end setup. So you've got your really nice carrying case, which probably nobody ever uses, but uh, you, you can put your unused cables in here if you need to. And of course, all those cables. And what are those? All those cable ties, um, modular cables, quite a lot, quite a lot. And uh, we'll just take everything out and take a look and see exactly what's inside. But oh my God, that's a lot of cables. <laughs> that is a lot of cables. So, and over here is a PSU on the other side. The PSU is in a really nice, really nice packaging over here. Small and compact, however, very, very heavy. Um, it's a heavy PSU. And again, I'm gonna just leave the box aside. Take a look at the PSU. Um, it feels really premium. Uh, I'm really, really premium. premium. It's got a matte finish, kind of industrial look. And uh, the entire PSU is designed to be like a very dark themed PSU. So looks really good. Uh, aesthetically, I passed the inspection, okay? And it's got a huge fan. It looks like a 140 millimeter fan, maybe compare. Um, yeah, 140 millimeter. So it should run quiet and it should provide lots of airflow. And uh, on the other side of the so over here what do we have we have the motherboard connection on the top we have a cpu1 vga1 vga3 cpu2 vga2 and vga4 so a whole bunch of the 12 volts over here motherboards and then you have four individual sata uh, connections over here all modular okay So over here we have, again, I have to zoom out again. We have the Noctua D15 and uh, let's see. So again, it, the packaging is already a beast. I paid $89 on Amazon. Uh, the D15 is their top of the line gigantic air cooler. Um, that Noctua offers. So it's a 150 millimeter times 165 millimeter um, cooler. It weights almost one kilogram, which is uh, how many pounds? I don't know, but it's pretty heavy. Um, material is made of copper and aluminum and is compatible with both Intel and AMD, including the AM4 processors. So it uses the newest SSO2 bearing, which is a fluid dynamic bearing that the, um, the Noctua have uh, been using in the past, but it's improved the model for longer life, I guess. I 
I can tell you it's got way more fins than the U14S that I had on my 19, um, 3900X. Way more fins. So, and they actually put this piece of cardboard in here just to secure the fan so it doesn't move around. And uh, so remove that. And this is the setup itself. Interestingly, when you remove that piece, you know, the entire thing is moving around a little bit. You got one, two, three, four, five, six heat pipes um, all going through. So each one is going through one of those fins over here. And uh, it's a quite tall tower. So I guess by default, you can just run this one fan. If you feel the need to run the second one, you just mount it on the, uh, which end do you mount it on? Let's see. I would say probably this end and then have the, have the air blowing this way and out that way. Okay. So that's the process. That's the, um, so the SSO2 system is with metal bearing. Um, and they actually show the metal piece in here to let you know this is a metal bearing. So it's going to, it's gonna last for sure, and I have no doubt about that. Uh, again, this thing you have to mount with the little included uh, clip, pay the included clip right over here. I'm not gonna take it out right now. I'm gonna do it in the build um, in the next section of the video, or I might just make a new video of the build. Okay, so this one is gonna be the unboxing part of this this entire build, and. Uh, uh, really well made. On the bottom, uh, the con connecting area or the contacting area, it looks to be aluminum, but quote me if I'm wrong, but they do say they used copper parts in there. So I don't really know which part is copper, uh, but for now it looks like everything is aluminum. And uh, this might be stainless steel maybe. I, I really don't know, okay? So, um, Again, to install the processor, you'll probably have to remove the fan because you need to access the screw on the back. So you need to secure it before you install all, the, all those fans onto the heatsink, which might take quite a while, okay? So I'm gonna move this aside. We have two more things to unbox. Second to the last is the ASUS Tough Gaming X750 Plus. And uh, this is uh, another entry level. Um, motherboard you can use it for gaming but for me i'm mainly using it for work okay so it doesn't matter whatever they call it but um, motherboard nowadays are actually mostly catering to the gaming community when gamers wants you know the best gaming motherboard possible or the best of everything and the flashiest uh, rig setup <laughs> okay so opening it up let's see what's inside of course you have the motherboard We're just gonna go through the the basic setup of the motherboard really quick and let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. All right. Okay, so here is the motherboard in all its glory. Um, couple areas that's interesting to point out. Uh, they said they used the uh, 12, uh, 10 plus two phase, excuse me, 10 plus two phase for the, um, for the processor power. I guess that's for the stability of, you know, overclocking. Uh, for general use, it's more than enough. They have a reinforced um, PCI uh, Express times 16 slot. Again, this is a 4.0 standard, um, another 4.0 standard slot, but I, I'm assuming this one is gonna be at a reduced speed. Um, again, that's gonna be a PCI Express times four, 4.0 slot, I think, uh, M.2. And over here is another one, um, they actually, hide it behind a heatsink, a aluminum heatsink. So I guess 
it's probably best for me to just mount my M.2 over here on this side because um, obviously over here, I don't really see a point to mount the heatsink. Um, again, all the X570 motherboards are actively cooled. Um, something disappointing is this piece is actually plastic. Again, anytime there's plastic, it's not in contact with the actual heatsink under there. So pointless to have those plastic things laying around. It blocks airflow. What I'm going to do is actually later on just remove those plastic parts and obviously this one because um, it's going to restrict a lot of airflow around this area. So for sure, I'm going to remove this piece. It's plastic and it looks, looks super tacky. I hate those things. Um, socket is over here, obviously. Um, the socket design is actually very, very simple compared to the Intel. Again, because Intel have a reversed pin setup. So... Uh, the, for the Intel, the pin's actually on the motherboard, so it's actually a little more complex on the motherboard. Uh, over here, the pin's on the processor, so it's slightly easier. Um, your power, uh, that's uh, USB 3. Uh, SATA, you have eight SATA uh, connectors. That's quite a lot. Four DIMM slots for DDR4. And uh, um, again, those heat sinks are actually aluminum for the, um, for the resistors, I think. Um, and over here is what I'm talking about. So usually for the CPU, you only get this little A pin over here, but now they started to have the requirements for an additional four pin. Uh, at least it's optional for now, but you have the four pin option to plug in a four pin connector in here for more stable power, according to them. Uh, again, it's optional, but it's better if you have an extra connector to plug in there. Um, I can see right off the bat, there's, there are two four pin for the for the uh, for the fan maybe uh, that looks like for LED and over here is another two four pin connectors for the fans uh, again M.2 is over here uh, PCIe and that's all those times one slots for PCI Express uh, I think that's the network card over there for the giga gigabit network um, the audio they actually used a little EMI shield for the audio. So that might help with improving the audio quality slightly. And they also said they isolated the audio processing area over here. So this area is for audio and they isolated it uh, and claiming that it might improve the gaming experience a little bit, maybe, or if not at all, I don't know. Uh, over here is your, all your IO connectors. Uh, looks like USB, regular USBs. Um, that's, that, that might be the USB 3. Um, so I don't know what that one is, but this is USB 3, I think. No, <laughs> I'm wrong. That's USB 3. That's, uh, that's a really old COM. Dot, uh, the, the COM connector for the, for the serial, serial uh, connection. I doubt anybody have any of those cards anymore laying around or even the extension for it. Um, what is this? AAFP, that might be for the audio. Uh, and over here is your uh, front panel connectors. And uh, so those little white ones are actually RGB connectors. So um, and there's a jumper cable for clearing the CMOS or clearing the BIOS. BIOS. All right, so obviously I haven't gone through the, uh, the ports yet. So you're pretty standard fare. You have the uh, audio ports over here. You even have a uh, optical port over here and uh, gigabit uh, network you have the USB I think that's 3.2 of the uh, turquoise color you have some HDMI and uh, um, the display port over here for processors that actually had integrated graphics but uh, it doesn't really apply here okay for this processor and you have some more USB 3.1 ports, and I believe this one is uh, 3.2 USB-C port, and again, a few more 3.1. So you have uh, right on the board two, four USB 3.1, uh, two 3.2, and one 3.2 Type-C, okay? Plenty of ports, and of course, a PS2 combination port over here for your old schooler who still likes to use the old keyboards or mouse.
And by the way, the case is not as heavy as the Define R5. It's actually quite light um, compared to the R5. So, okay, we have the top off already. And the bottom of the case is actually very, very light. Hopefully it's gonna fit the 1080 time, which I think it should fit. I'm just gonna do a quick reference. Yeah, it should be, uh, should be good enough, I guess. Um, let's open up the case. So as you can see, I have all the parts ready to go. Last step is just to take a quick unboxing of this case and show you guys what it's like. Um, on the back, your standard fare, it's all thumb screws. So, wow, it's, uh, you probably need a screw. You need a screwdriver to unscrew this because it's packed really tight, actually. Like really, really tight. I need to unscrew everything. At least, uh, you know, loosen them so I can screw them off fairly quickly. All right, let's open it up. So it's, uh, I think they call this a captured thumb screw. So when you when you loosen it, it doesn't really fall out. It just stays there. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, you wouldn't lose it, but it's not a quick closure. So you have to manually align it and then close it. Um, so this panel is all, let's take a look at the other side. Again, it's a, it's a very compact case compared to the Define R, R5 I had uh, before this one. And there are no sound dampening material over here. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, how do you call it? Um, a, a sheet metal, okay? So I'm already gonna assume it's gonna be louder than the, um, the Define R5. And interestingly, on the top, it's a magnetic closure. So there are magnetic strips over here and you put it on the top and then it closes like that. And interestingly, um, there, are no, there are no additional filter for the top part. So if you're concerned about, uh, you know, the air or the dust going in, don't install any fan blowing into the case on the top. But I think this is designed to have the fan blowing out for the liquid cooling. So it shouldn't affect it uh, too much because I am gonna install three 120 millimeter fans in the front um, for the maximum airflow, okay? Um, and uh, look at the side. So there are some, you know, all the connections hidden over here. So. Uh, some quick uh, snapping uh, zip ties over here to secure the cables. And on the back, you have a few slots for mounting your SSD drives and things like that. Um, here's a little kind of like soft, again, it, the, it's thumb screw, but they actually packed it really tight. You have to uh, loosen it first with a screw drive and, you know, unlock everything. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and start building this and then I'll let you, know, let you guys know or see to see if this case actually fits a, uh, fits a Ryzen 9 3900X, 3950X setup with a uh, fairly large graphic card, okay? So, um, and it comes with two fans. So one fan in the front and one fan on the back blowing out. Again, I'm gonna replace the fan on the back side with the Noctua high airflow um, 1700 RPM fan so I can blow most of the air out from the back vent okay so the case it's uh, it's very open there are there are holes everywhere so it's most definitely not gonna be quiet that I can tell you right away um, the front panel I need to figure out how to open this mesh area Maybe I can So also there's a filter piece on the bottom And The The front panel it's again that 
mesh design looks looks pretty good even though it's a fairly cheaper material it feels cheap compared to the define series uh, for sure but uh, it works so I'm not so fond of the the top panel because as you can see when they aligned the magnetic strip it's not very aligned and it's kind of offset and I think okay so the they put it offset so um, there are mounting holes for the fan I guess it's offset for the mounting hole for the fan over there so okay no complaints um, but but that's that's the top part it's it's very air flowy okay pretty pretty simple case $84 USB 3.0 ports in the on the top power button over here and uh, you know your audio connections and the reset button the reset button is really loud um, and that's pretty much it you don't even have a spot to put any of the you know optical drives over here it's just gonna be fans in the front and you probably have a few spots to mount your hard drive on the back area or maybe down here where the uh, yeah you have uh, like two spots to mount uh, 5.25 inch hard drives but that's pretty much it no no options for optical drives okay so keep that in mind but anyway nowadays nobody use optical drives anymore even the blu-rays are kind of died out um, so yeah again a very light functional case over here Oh my god, guys, uh, you know what? The Meshify C, I don't ever recommend you doing a um, oversized air cooling in the Meshify C because it's a disaster. Uh, very, very hard to work with. And uh, so I was doing the assembly kind of off camera and uh, the more I got into it, the more frustrated I am. So instead of building my new Ryzen 9 3950X in this case, I actually just moved my Ryzen 9 3900X into this case. And honestly, I'm just gonna continue, use my Define R5, which is the case over here for, the, uh, for my new Ryzen 9 3950X. Reason being this case is so much easier to work with. Um, it's kind of a traditional design and uh, to be honest I think the traditional design is really the best way and easiest way to go when it comes to assembly or assembling your first your very first DIY project and uh, uh, the Meshify C it might be great for liquid cooling to be honest uh, so you have more room to work with like especially around the motherboard um, in the center of the motherboard area I'll show you guys Things that I really don't like about the Meshify C okay so from my building experience and again the case I have already completed moving the old Ryzen 9 3900X into the case but um, as you can see I basically pretty much just removed uh, the power supply and the motherboard and then just basically shifted everything over here into the Meshify C so Couple of things, the, the shroud for the power supply, um, it might look very nice, but it's, it's a hassle to work with because when you put the power supply in, you have to, if it's a modular power supply, you have to get the module kind of ready to go uh, before you install it in here because you have to literally slide, slide the power supply from the back over here in there with the cable already assembled and then work your way from the back of the mother from the back of the case I'll also show you guys um, yeah I, I don't really enjoy working with the mesh if I see the define r5 is so much so much easier to work with and take a look at the back so as you can see the cable uh, the power supply sits on the bottom and it's really hard to get in there to work on the cables. so you better have the cables installed and ready to go before you slide it into here um, the cable as you can see power cable have to go through different routes to go uh, reach the motherboards but it's fine because when you put the cover on it actually covers it 
And if you need to install the SSDs, um, the best way to install it is over here with the SSD bracket on back of the motherboard. Um, they, they do have this uh, included, um, I, I think a three, three inch, um, the case over here for like uh, the larger traditional HDD hard drives. But this case, if you put it there, you have no way of shifting around your power cable in the case. And if you have lots of connections, it's pre pretty much mission impossible, okay? So again, this thing has become useless in the case and it actually blocks airflow and it blocks the cable routing. A lot of hassle. It's also a lot of hassle to take this thing out. You have to first remove a piece in the front, uh, in the top over here, which you have to remove the front panel and unscrew two screws and kind of lift it to get this piece out. And then you have to unscrew the two screws at the bottom of the case to get this little piece of crap out of the case. It's really a lot of hassle. The thing doesn't have any meaning sitting in the PSU, like PSU shroud down here. It's a useless piece again and dead weight. Very, very hard to work with. So again, I think they're trying to limit you from using the traditional hard drives. But honestly, if you do a lot of video production, the high capacity HDDs are actually essential because um, it really comes uh, quite costly if you are using SSDs for all your video storage. Uh, so there's that. Take, I mean, for sure, do take that into consideration. But if money is no objection, I would suggest you get something better than Meshify C. This case, uh, hard to work with. Um, and again, what I discovered is the front mesh they didn't give you a removable air filter. So honestly, you cannot clean the front panel as well as you want it to be because behind this mesh is a foam and that foam is unremovable. You have to, you have to pry open the mesh, which is secured by just a couple tabs. Um, it's a extension of the mesh, a uh, couple tabs securing it onto the plastic over here, the framing over here. If you, if you like just uh, pry open those tabs like a few times, the tabs would fall off and uh, you take the foam out and you try to vacuum it, it's gonna be really, really hard um, compared to the Define R5 where you have a dedicated filter that's super, super easy to clean. I'm just gonna show you guys. Like this is from Define R5, super, super easy to clean. And over here, impossible to clean, okay? So it's horrible. And uh, what other complaint I have? The case is uh, it's kind of flimsy. Um, I mean, for eighty eighty four dollars, it's it's somewhere there. Uh, it's got some creative designs, but then again, the placement of uh, some of the hardware inside the case is just less ideal. And um, you can mount only two fans in the case, despite the fact that you have the entire front panel in mesh. So over here, you cannot get any airflow because you can't mount a fan in here. Uh, so again, dead weight, you wasted area on the bottom. The top filter piece is very, very flimsy. Not so good to use. I think they expect you to actually mount a water cooler in here because otherwise the, the dust, the hair, everything is gonna get in from the top. And uh, so yeah, if you, if you do air cooling, just, uh, just try not to use this case, avoid this case at all possible. Uh, for air cooling, the Define R5, which is case like almost four or five years ago, uh, came out, it works uh, a lot better, uh, to be honest. And uh, so I have completed the build. As you can see, it does hide the cables well because most of the stuff gets routed on the back end over here. And uh, so basically, if you put the panel in, if you put the panel on here, uh, you're not gonna see any of the um, distracting cables over here. So I'm gonna put the panel on and then again, it's gonna hide all the mess like uh, uh, quite quite well. So again, the, the panel, like two panels are captive thumb screws and on the R5, one of the panel is quick release. So it's really easy to open the front panel over here uh, on the R5, on the, Define on the Meshify C, it's impossible. Um, yeah, 
I, I honestly was not impressed with this case. And the reason I put my wife's build, which is the Ryzen 9 3900X in here is because the, the air cooler is much, much smaller. Imagine if I put this gigantic piece in here, is there's, there's absolutely no room to work with um, in this little tiny case. And uh, so enough complaint. Uh, once you finish the build and you put it, uh, you know, um, on the side of the desktop and just forget about it, it's gonna be a fairly good looking case uh, just sitting there doing its job with a fairly high airflow uh, coming with two fans uh, from the front and one fan from the back. And uh, so instead of building my Ryzen 9 39 50X uh, in this Meshify C case, which I was really excited to try out uh, and turn out super disappointed. I am actually gonna go ahead and build my uh, 3950X with the with my old trusty Define R5 case. And I'm just gonna actually show you guys once I complete the build because um, really there is nothing too fancy about the build. And I'm pretty sure you would rather see the finished build and what it looks like and maybe the just do a maybe just do a quick performance test uh, for you guys to find out whether the processor lives up to standards or not. Okay guys, so I'm really glad I did not do the uh, the complete build in front of the camera because it actually took me almost the entire afternoon uh, to finish the build, uh, which is basically transferring my old 3900X into uh, the, the Meshify C case I just bought and then build the, my brand new 3950X back into the Define R5 case. And in this case, um, it actually worked out beautifully. So my wife have a performance PC with high airflow and I still get to enjoy my Define R5 with a fairly quiet case with the newest uh, 16 core processor from AMD. And uh, as you can see, everything worked out perfectly. The R5 is still my favorite case uh, when it comes to building a um, air-cooled high-performance PC system. So really, really easy because there's lots of room to work with. There's no PSU shroud, so you can just basically place your PSO at any place you like and work around your cables. So as you can see, a very, very clean look in the front of the case because everything can be very nicely put into the back. And here we go. Look at the cable you know, management. I think in this case, it actually did pretty good. So again, for AMD, um, the new Ryzen uh, 9 series processors, they require two of those CPU cables. So that's why you see two wires over here. Usually with the uh, with my old Intel build, there's only one cable required. So there are two cables over here and then the rest of the cable is nicely routed through the central area over here uh, with the like in between the rubber grommet uh, behind those cables. And since I have a HDD which I use to store video contents, um, the HDD is mounted somewhere um, that doesn't affect airflow of the, you know, the front fan blowing the air from uh, the front into the CPU as well as into the graphic card area. So again, there are still extra rooms to mount SSDs on the back of the motherboard, I mean on the back of the, uh, the case. And uh, this pretty much completes the setup. Again, it's really, really convenient and really, really quick to build with the Define R5. So if you are thinking about doing a air-cooled build, um, get a case that's slightly longer and uh, have more rooms for, especially kind of a larger air, uh, like our larger uh, air-cooled fans. In this case, the Noctua D15, which is probably the largest air-cooled fan you can get over here for the uh, Ryzen 9 uh, series of the processors and uh, that will give you plenty of room to work with and uh, it's really a joy to build on the, on the Define R5 and I haven't tried the R6 the, I think the only difference is the R6 actually had the new USB-C port on the, on the top panel over here but the uh, majority of other stuff haven't changed significantly 
And again, I'm a old school air cooled guy uh, with, you know, the fans blowing in the front and the fans on the processor, fan on the back. Um, it haven't given me any issue. Perfectly fine during gaming, perfect fine during video production work. And uh, um, next, I'm gonna put the case back together and uh, we actually gonna go do a quick Cinebench and see what is the difference between the 3950X and the um, my old 3900X. So that's like a 12 core versus, um, 12 core versus uh, 16 core comparison. And again, I'm gonna, in the end, let you guys know, or let me just align this and do it properly. So the case is also very easy to install because it's got a quick release instead of a, uh, the, the thumb screw on the back for the Meshify. So it's really, really quick to just open up the, uh, the panels. And let me get the next panel over here. All right, so I'm gonna seal the back as well. Um, now again, if you do any of the, uh, if you have a case, you know, that showcases the back of the, uh, of the motherboard on, on your PC, it's going to be a little bit harder to do the cable management because they usually give you a little, um, cover to hide everything, um, on this side. But again, I'm, I'm old school. I, I like playing old steel with a sound dampening material works great very quiet. Um, so see you in the next section. I'm going to bring it down to my desktop and we're going to do some tests. Okay.